Welcome to our review of Black Brim 1876, oh. a two-part escape room in a box experience from Puzzling Pursuits, who we have to thank for sending a review copy our way. Thanks, Puzzling Pursuits. Black Brim 1876 is an escape room in a box style publish game published in 2020 by Puzzling Pursuits. Uh, it's designed for one to six players, more if you don't mind pairing up for some puzzles, ages 14 plus. We personally say the more the merrier, with five or six players being the real sweet spot. There's also no reason younger kids couldn't play, especially when teamed up with an adult. Now, the game is broken into two parts, with each half taking an hour or two to complete. Uh, we found the first half to be much quicker than the second, with our total time between both spreading over two game nights for a total of about three hours. This box is also part of a trilogy of games that tells a concurrent story. The first installment has a MSRP of $60 USD and is available directly from Puzzling Pursuits, where you can often find it on sale, like right now, using our link. You can get it for only $34.95. Yeah, big price drop there. I have a feeling this is one of those games that you probably are never going to have to actually pay full price, but we'll see. So in Black Brim 1876, a private detective in Victorian England has received a package from the local police department. This package indicates that the entire police force has been kidnapped and are being held hostage somewhere. It's up to you and your team to save them by solving the various puzzles left behind by the kidnapper. Now, I got to say, I totally felt like I was playing a Batman game trying to solve the Riddler's puzzles here, though it was set in Victorian England. Now, note, this is an escape room style puzzle game. This is not a murder mystery or a cold case file. There's no case to solve. There's no putting the clues together. You just have a series of puzzles to figure out. Also be aware that access to the internet is going to be required to play this game. While it doesn't have an app, it does require you to go to a certain web page in order to enter, enter your answers, progress the story, and you're probably going to have to use the web to do some researching to solve some of the puzzles. Uh, technically, that would be Bane who kidnapped the entire police force, not the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> Bane must have been working with the Riddler for there this particular one. All right. Well, for a spoiler-free look... At what you get inside this escape room in a box, check out our Black Brim 1876 unboxing video on YouTube. So when I recorded this video, I, I like all these escape room in a box things. I was kind of worried about spoiling anything. I wasn't sure exactly how much information it was safe to share. Now, I've since learned and been told directly from the publisher, you can't really spoil anything by just showing the bits. And seeing the components of this game isn't going to give anything away. Again, there's no mystery. There's no clue. There's just solve the puzzle. So all you're going to get to see is like the pieces that make up the puzzles. So while reading the written review and as well as while watching this, Sean's going to probably pop up some images once we get to the YouTube version. You don't have to worry about anything getting spoiled. Now inside the Black Brim 1876 box, you will find a small instructional pamphlet that explains how the game is meant to be played. Under that, you will find two rather large folders, one for each chapter in the game. Upon opening the first envelope, you will find a wax sealed envelope that introduces you to the story and the materials needed to solve the first chapter. Once you complete that chapter, you're instructed to open the second envelope, which is filled with even more stuff. Now, the quality of the components here is excellent, but everything's paper-based. You're not going to find any strings, balls, marbles, candles, small skulls, or other doodads like we've seen in other escape room-style games. That said, you do get a wide variety of paper products, including a menu, card discs, postcards, art prints, and more. Now, my copy of the game also had a small problem. We got two copies of a newspaper clipping. The box is only meant to have one. Due to this, I recommend checking the contents of the box and comparing them to the inventory list on the website that's in that instruction book. While this doesn't didn't ruin our experience in any way. We did waste quite a bit of time comparing two identical sheets, trying to figure out what was different, because why'd they give us two? Now, many of the components in the game are made to be written on, and there is one component that is meant to be folded. As designed, this is meant to be a one-and-done, single-play, disposable game. 
That said, with liberal use of tracing paper and scrap paper, we completed the game and left it in a replayable state. Though be warned if you use tracing paper, how hard you press may make some indentations. So there might be one particular puzzle in mind that someone may find a little easy if they hold it up to the right lights. But I think your average group is probably going to want to use the bits as intended and draw all over stuff and fold and trace lines and all that fun stuff. Now, component-wise, we were rather impressed by what you get and the amount of gameplay you get for the price, especially if you can pass it on to someone else or let someone else play. But even as a single-time single, player, a single time experience, I felt like we got plenty of gameplay out of it for the price, especially the discounted price. So now that you have a rough idea of what you get with a copy of Black Grim 1876, let's talk a bit about how you use all of this stuff. So one of my favorite things about escape room style games is there isn't any real prep work needed to play. You don't generally have to punch anything. There's no thick rule book to learn or how to play videos to watch. You just get a group of players together, sit down, open the box and discover it all together at the same time. Now, we personally did this with Brap. Black Brim 1876 with five players from three generations in the same family with ages from 12 to 69. The instructions explain how the game works very clearly and will point you to a website that we suggest having open the entire time you are playing. This is web-based, so there's no app to download and it won't matter exactly what device you're using to get to it. <laughs> you then crack open the first folder marked chapter one, and open the waxed sealed letter you find inside. This sets up the story and points you where to go next. And if you have a daughter like me, she's going to be obsessed about the fact that I want to pass the game on to someone else because she really wants to keep that wax sealed letter. Now, at this point, you're going to have five different puzzles to solve, each of which is completely independent of the others, except for the fact you're going to use the answers to those five puzzles to solve the metal puzzle for part one. What this means is that different players can work on different puzzles at the same time, or players can work together to solve puzzles, or you can swap puzzles when you get stuck and so on. Once you have figured out an answer to the puzzle, you go onto the web page and confirm that your answer is correct. If you get stumped, you can also get clues for any of the puzzles. Now, there are multiple clues for each puzzle. I think one even went like eight deep and each gives you a bit more information, just like kind of a nudging push to make sure you're on the right track. As soon as you get stuck for the first second millisecond, you're not sure. Check that first clue. All this does is make sure you have what you need to solve the puzzle. This is the thing that checks your inventory. It's quality control. This is how we figured out we had a duplicate newspaper clipping because we looked up and the first clue said you need the newspaper clipping. That is the only tool you need. If you're missing the newspaper clipping, click here or check here. I'm like, oh, there's only supposed to be one. As each puzzle is independent, after you've confirmed your answer from the web, you can basically put that puzzle away. That's what we did to keep the cable clear and, and you don't want to mess anyone up where they think they need extra bits. You're not going to need anything from any of the puzzles again. Once it's solved, you confirmed your answer. That part of the game is done. Now, after you solve the initial five puzzles, you will have to combine your answers to make one giant Zord. I mean, sorry, combine your answers to get a final <laughs> solution which again, you will enter on the web page. You will then be instructed to move on to part two. Now, while you can do one marathon section and move right into part two, I recommend packing everything up, put everything from chapter one in its envelope, put the chapter two envelope on the top of the box and save that for another day. Now, part two plays the same as part one, but has six different puzzles instead of five. These puzzles are presented in a very different way from the first half, and all of them are more involved with more components. They are all still independent from each other, and solving the final puzzle will require the answers from all six puzzles. Once you correctly guess the final puzzle, you get a bit of a story and are then invited to pick up part two. Now, it's worth noting that this box does include a complete standalone story that stands on its own. While you're going to end up probably wanting more, but you won't be because you're left with a cliffhanger or needing the final answer. It's not like it leaves you hanging. Now, as for the individual puzzles in this game, they run the gamut from logic puzzles, ciphers, codes, pattern recognition, physical manipulation of objects, uh, perception checks, and more. 
Now, one thing to be aware of that as a group, you are probably going to need to do some outside of the game research to solve some of the puzzles. I would honestly be shocked if anyone could complete this with at least one Google search or use of Google Lens. What you won't find in this game is a timer or any form of final score. Unlike mm. many other escape room in a box style games, Black Brim 1876 is just about working together and having fun solving puzzles without the stress of trying to solve every, any, everything under time constraints or trying to get the highest score possible. Now, when I first read the premise for Black Brim 1876 with all these police people disappearing, I was expecting more of a murder mystery game, something more like the Maple Book case from Hidden Games or Escape Mail, games we've reviewed in the past, where you're solving some puzzles, but the real drive is to solve the mystery to solve the crime. That's not what Black Brim is at all. While there is a story here, it's a pretty simple one, and really it only gives a theme to the various puzzle pieces. This is a puzzle box. You get 13 different puzzles, five in the first chapter with its solution and six in the second chapter with the final solution. This is the main thing I think people need to know before picking up this game. I guess really it's interesting that it's this is sold as an escape room in a box, but the yes. lack of any score or timing steps it back from that. And, and I think yeah. that it's almost false to call it an escape room because you know an escape room requires that goal right you have to there, there's something to beat or not there's a there's a yes no you win or you don't win in in a standard escape room uh and so i think some people may find this a little odd as an escape room because it's missing that sort of binary win loss uh concept so the way it recreates that is the final goal is to escape from a room. So <laughs> that that is the the final puzzle <laughs> is to I, I guess this is a slight spoiler, but is to to escape with the now freed police officers. Right. So I think it ties it in that way. All right, fair. Now, what I loved about this compared to honestly every other escape room puzzle game we played is the fact the puzzles were 100 percent independent of each other. I love the fact that the five of us playing each basically got to pick a puzzle to try out and try to work out on our own and how that involved into asking each other for help and eventually working together. This, this is interesting because I, I I'm torn about this. Um, while it's great to have that independent and it, it really does help the player count expand part of the fun that I have experienced in escape rooms is that need to have the extra thought and the extra the the, the cooperation and you know right. one person over here on this part while someone else is reading out things from somewhere else um and again that there, obviously i'm talking about the physical escape rooms but you can recreate that through mm -hmm. having to interact with multiple puzzles together and that's left out here which well again, no it's not though because your meta game is you've now solved your five puzzles now work together to find the answer Right. That's how you get to chapter two. And but that's it's, how it's, you eventually solve the game is you've happened to take these five disparate parts and then later six disparate parts and somehow put them together. Right. I guess so I, I think I you're mean, getting with, that. Yeah, I think I think it's, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, we obviously don't want to spoil anything here. So it's yes. hard to it's hard <laughs> to sort of get get exactly how much of that is or isn't there with the uh, you know, with with that final meta puzzle. Yeah. And then that said, too, I was actually surprised how much another set of eyes or another person or another brain helped to solve puzzles when we did get stuck. Yes, we all start, started with our own independent puzzles, but in the end, it wasn't, right? In the first chapter, it worked out that some of us got our puzzles on our own. Like we got it, went, oh, I get this, did the solving, grabbed the app, punched in, or, oh, excuse me, it's actually drop down menus, but selected the answer and were rewarded with, yes, you figured it out. But then we started having to team up. It was like, you know what? I've looked at this for long enough. Do you see anything I'm missing? Here's what I have so far. And the final, not, not the final solution, but the fifth puzzle gave us the most difficulty. And I'm, I'm not going to mention which specific one, but all five of us teamed up to solve this final puzzle, each coming up with different solutions and ways to try things. And this was a, a more 
physical manipulation style puzzle where there was more to look at. It wasn't just, you know, figure out the cipher, do some math type of thing. This was a like, oh, what if you try this? Oh, how about trying this? What if you hold it this way? And that, that kind of thing. And I love the feeling of like some of us had that, hey, solve this on my own. Others of us had that. We solved this together to it was literally all five of us in the, you know, felt like the final hour, even though there was no time limit, trying to solve that final puzzle. All right, fair. Well, it seems like you, you did get the experience, even if it doesn't necessarily come across that way, hearing about it. Uh, right. The meta puzzle is, is certainly giving you more of that than, than I think uh, I was initially thinking. So yeah. that's good to hear. Fair enough. Now, the other bonus to this format that is probably going to affect me more than some other groups playing this together because I have younger kids is this didn't have the arguing we saw in other escape room games or arguing over who got to do what. Um, in particular, some of the card driven escape room games out there are really difficult because you have one deck of cards and one card and all the players are trying to look at the card at once. And we didn't get the whole, well, I want to flip over the next card. Well, I want to see it. Let me see it. Well, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't get to see that one. You solved the puzzle before I even got to see it. Or can I have a turn punching things in the app, right? We each did our own thing and then worked together when needed without the, the, the fighting and the not having people feeling bad that they were left out. That was great for our particular family. And I think it's going to apply to other groups. Right. And now I know uh, in particular, you'd mentioned to me that there were certain uh, knowledge sets that were yes. required for this game, uh, which is why you ended up recommending, you know, having Google Lens open or yes. you know having some research materials. Uh, is that you think that's going to be a sort of you know a pretty standard thing for I'm going to say North Americans that are going to require uh, yes, some of that? I would. Um, I was going to get to that in a bit, but I'll jump to it now. Um, this is actually my one complaint about the game. Um, the you you this is going to you're going to have to test your Google skills. Uh, the game is clear about this right from the start. It says you will, you may require outside information to solve this puzzle. I knew it was coming, but I really found having to use modern technology kind of broke my sense of immersion the game had. Not that I really felt like as an investigator in 1776, but like I'm pretty sure the inve the investigator you're playing doesn't have an iPad with them, right? And and I guess you could say, well, these are things the investigators of the time would know. But I don't know. It just, it to me, felt like a weak excuse. Yeah, uh, 1876, not 1776. Oh, sorry, 1876. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I think it's it's definitely uh, a stretch. And while I understand uh, the reasons why they've gone this way, and I actually applaud them for not going with an app. Um, yep. I think that the choice of a web page for this is a better choice and good for them. Uh, at the same time... Uh, it's, you know, the fact that the fact that they're sort of leaning into it as much as they are uh, and and not providing you with the information to set yourself up for success uh, with the knowledge of that world, um, of the world of 1876 around you is is a yeah. tricky thing. You know, we're role players. Um, we've, we've been involved in the SCA and other, uh, you know, sort of uh historical replication type things and so the the fact to, of, of getting thrown so far out of yes. that is jarring i uh, absolutely agree like basically again i don't want to spoil anything but there are landmarks that if you don't know what those landmarks are you're never going to solve the puzzle there are pieces of artwork that if you don't know the pieces of the artwork you're never going to be able to solve the puzzle like i said there, there's probably a group out there that could play this without having a problem but i think that's going to be rare um, honestly, I found Google Lens to be amazing. Uh, I have a Pixel phone. It has Google Lens built in. All I needed to do was scan some postcards and hit Google Lens and got the answers I was looking for pretty quickly. Um, later puzzles had some other things. The other thing is you have to remember this is in Britain and their currency is different than ours. Again, just slight spoiler the, but there's a menu and part of solving that puzzle is, is doing things with that menu. And if you don't know the, the, the annotation, or British currency, you're going to want to have to Google that. <laughs> um, so it was a little weird, right? Like it was just a little odd that way. Now that said, the puzzles were interesting. They were all very different. Like I'm, I'm still, these companies blow me away, like the exit games, especially by how they're still putting out content, right? So there's three parts to this. And then they have another three-part chapter 
like game and then they have a christmas one and like i haven't i've only played this one we're looking forward to checking out another one but i'm like how do you keep coming up with these puzzles to be that different like you've got what is uh, 13 different puzzles that are very different from each other like some we got right away one of those like you read it and you're like oh i catch that keyword in the title and i bet you it means i got to do this yep look i got to do this and you get to feel smart you're like i got it that's awesome and then other ones took us much longer to figure out (laughs) Um, we did use clues, uh, none on the first chapter. We were good there, except for, again, we had to check the one, the first clues. I don't even count as using a clue. That's make sure you have all the components that were supposed to come for the game. So we did that in the first half and did find a problem. Uh, again, didn't ruin the game because we weren't missing anything. We had an extra thing. Second chapter, we did have to use some clues, but we never had to look up a solution. And again, the clues are presented multiple ways. So it's like, yeah, we figured that part out. Yeah, we figured that part out. Oh, we figured that part out. Oh, that's what that meant. And then go on and solve the rest. Like it, it wasn't even like it gave us a clue that like in the next five seconds we solved it. Not even in the next five minutes. Still took us probably another 15 minutes from that step to solve this one particular problem. That was the one that gave us the hardest time. Which again, by the end, we were like, yep, that, that all made sense. There wasn't, there was no, no, no one would have got that moment, which is the kind of thing that will ruin one of these type of games. Actually, that's the question I had. Darkling Bright brings up in the chat room. Uh, did it use modern British currency? Uh, which is decimal based, or did it use older British currency, which is absolutely not decimal based? <laughs> All I will say is, what is the name of the game? All right. Uh, so, a couple suggestions for anyone who is going to play Black Brim 1876 is for one, have the web page open, use it liberally. Uh, those first clues, use them like, like at all stock. Maybe you're missing a component. Like, I, I hate to say it, but our game had a quality assurance issue. Maybe others do. You don't want to be sitting there spending hours trying to solve a puzzle you can't solve because someone forgot to stick a piece of paper in your box. So use that. It doesn't give you any answers. Just make sure you have what you need. Again, Google Lens is your friend, and it's easier to try and find the right words to search, especially when you don't know exactly what you're searching. Then remember, it's set in England, right? Uh, If you don't know historic England, you might need to do some extra searching compared to other people. Lastly, though, this one's more important to me, is I don't recommend this as a solo experience. What really made this shine was the fact there were five of us and five puzzles in the first chapter, and then six puzzles in the second was an extra. So what first person to finish the puzzle grabs that leftover puzzle and works on it. The entire game, we found the most common reason for getting stuck was missing something or thinking one thing meant another thing and heading down the wrong path. Having someone else to bounce ideas off of and provide a different perspective was key to us solving this game. I don't think the game would be as enjoyable as a solo experience. And in this case, I think the more players, the better. I would even suggest and and can see playing with seven or eight or even 10 players, having people team up right from the start to work on individual puzzles. No other escape room game I played can I recommend at these higher player counts. Well, at the same time, generally speaking, uh... Most, I would, I, to me, the, the concept of an escape room requires at least a couple of people, right. <laughs> um, you know, the, the idea of a solo escape room just boggles my mind. I'm sure <laughs> there are some people who are even more introverted than I am who may crave that concept. Um, but as someone who doesn't like people in general, I still want people <laughs> to play with for an escape room. Um, yeah. and cause that interaction, in any form, even if you are, you know, for the most part, trying to do your own puzzles, the interaction and, and the, you know, the second checking and, and things mm-hmm. really makes for a lot of that uh, yep. experience. So overall, my family found Black Brim 1876 to be one of the most enjoyable escape room in a box experience we played. And honestly, we've ranked up quite the pile of completed games in this genre at this point. Um, We love the fact the puzzles in the game were independent of each other, which let us divide and conquer. Uh, This gave everyone a feeling of control and agency, right? Everyone had a chance to try to do it on their own. My kids in particular loved that. They had their own thing to work on and do and still left room, though, to work together. But it let the kids play on their own until they felt they needed help that they asked for instead of us kind of driving the narrative, which I loved. Puzzle Mix was interesting and just challenging enough to keep us engaged without getting to that point of being frustrated. As long as you're willing to, you know, 
allow for the Google use. I, I'm sure yes. if you if you didn't have phones at the ready, I think oh. you probably would have had a very different experience. Well, I would have had to use more of those clues. I'm, I'm sure the clues eventually would have told me what I Googled if I went deep enough down that would have let me solve the puzzles. Now, if you've got a group of friends and or family that love solving puzzles, you really can't go wrong picking up Black Brim 1876. Compared to all the other escape room games we played, this is the best multiplayer experience we've had. Instead, if you're looking for a solo puzzle experience, I think there's better options out there than this game from Puzzling Pursuits. I really feel this is best as a group experience. Now, you should also probably look elsewhere if you're one of those people that's looking to solve a mystery. You're not getting your murder mystery dinner party style game here. This is not that kind of game. And it's not one of those, you know, CSI cold case files, follow the clues and solve the crimes. This is a, uh, the publisher is Puzzling Pursuits, right? That's well named. This is a puzzle solving experience. Well, that's it for our review of Black Brim 1876 from Puzzling Pursuits. Before we go, I also want to invite you to check out my written review of this escape room in a box experience over on the blog, tabletopbellhop.com, where you can see lots of pictures, which won't spoil anything, of this game. 